video. As you can see, I am standing in front of my van and there's something a little different about it, something you haven't seen before, and that is, drum roll please, da 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 a high top. I now have a high top on my van. Uh, when I bought this van, it was a low top, and I knew there was no question in my mind I wanted a high top. Uh, but my highest priority was to buy the newest possible van I could with the lowest possible miles. So when I bought this baby, it's a 2015. It was a year and a half old when I bought it, and it only had 12,000 miles. And 12,000 miles is pretty darn good, and I was really, really happy to get a van with 12,000 miles. My thinking was, I'm 62, and with a little luck, this van will last me the rest of my life. This will be the last van I ever buy and ever own. Uh, 20 years, I'll be 82, and I don't think I'll be on the road living in a van. So if, if I treat it well, and the Chevy is a great van, people write me all the time and say, what van should I buy? I recommend Chevys. They say, oh, I can't find a high top. I need something with a high top. Buy the van, add the high top later when you can afford it. That's exactly what I've done. I bought the newest Chevy van I could afford, a year and a half old, 12,000 miles, and I bought a low top knowing that I can live with a low top for a year, or two, or three, and when I can afford it, I would have put a high top on it. So there are a couple places that I'm aware of and tuned into to get a high top put on. There are more. These are just the ones that are in my circle of awareness. The big one is Fiberine in California, and I'm a West Coast guy, so I assumed I would go to Fiberine. They are top-notch. They do great work, uh, superb work, great high tops, expensive. When you buy the very best, you pay more for it. And they really are, I think, the very best. So a, a high top, at, at this high top at Fiberine would have been four grand, minimum installed, um, and maybe more. This is a 22 inch, and I really like that it's a sport and it's curved, and I'll show you different angles as you can, so you can get a better idea. I'm just really, really pleased with this high top. Um, and this would have been at least four grand there. The, I, I've known all along for a while now about a outfit in North Carolina, High Point, no, Thomasville, I'm sorry. Thomasville, North Carolina, uh, fiberglass me, that fiberglass mechanical engineering, fiberglass me. And they sell high tops for much, much less. And I've heard good things so about it. So give you an idea of the prices. The high top you're looking at here was $1,500. Well, that is a very inexpensive high top for 22 inches and sport. Um, he also sells for the exact same price a camper model, which is very straight and very straight across the top and goes straight up. And if you're looking for the most possible room you can get inside, that's it. Uh, the camper model is just really big inside, but I prefer something sleek. I wasn't looking for all the room I could get inside, and I'm really pleased with the looks and the performance of this sport model. $1,500, $500 for the installation kit, which you don't have to buy. You can just buy the top, $1,500, and then uh, it costs $800 to install it, $2,800 with this top installed. I paid him $3,000 because I had him install the solar, and a, uh, a vent, a fantastic fan. I, I bought the Max Air, but it, you could buy a, whichever one you buy, he installed. So I paid him a couple hundred extra for that extra work he did. So that was all on, and, um, and so this is a report on the high top. We'll go inside, we'll look, to look around, and I'm gonna tell you about my experience and what I think about the high top, because a lot of you have seen it in some of my videos or my friend Carolyn's videos, and you're just writing me and saying, oh, Bob, I wanna know, I'm really curious. Tell me about the high top. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm telling you about my new high top. So let me just say, I love, love, love having that high top. I added, uh, Storage. Well, I'll take you inside and show you a video of inside, and, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I added 1x10s and a 1x12 along each wall. I had uh, one thing James will do on any high top installer will do is leave you some of the roof on. So I left uh, the whole front area of the high top of the original roof on. So from, the, from under the cab where the driver sets, that's all, the roof is all still there. So when you come back, you stand up, and you can stand up straight, but inside, while you're sitting in the driver's seat, you reach up and you hit the headliners, just like you did before. And I also left two feet on at the back. So I left a big section at the front and the nose and a small section, two foot at the back. 
So what I did was, so if it's running this way, uh, and here's the nose, here's the tail, I'm always the tail, aren't I? And here are the two sidewalls. I put a 1 by 12, and here's the back door, the far back door that opens uh, barn doors, and the side door. Uh, on the side door side, I ran a 1 by 10 board this length, and on this side, the driver side, I ran a 1 by 12 and used all that for storage. So I've got the front end for storage and the back end for storage and all these sides unbelievable amount of extra storage. It's worth getting a high top just for all the extra storage. I carry a lot of camera gear and photography gear and so I, my, my space is all taken up with that stuff. So I need all the storage I can get. If you really like storage, the best way to get it is to add a high top. Amazing. Leave some of the roof, the front on, some of the back on, some side walls and you got stunning storage. I'll take you inside on my next video and show you the inside. So if it's all you can afford, buy the best you can afford right now. Spend the money on the, fa on the van. That's the foundation of your whole nomadic life is a good, reliable van that will not let you down. Great van first, move in, start saving money because you're living so cheap, then put on the high top. Here's the question. Would I recommend fiberglass me in North Carolina? Simply put, no. Do not go there and have your high top put on. My experience was terrible. Now, think about that. I have something to directly offer him. I videotaped the whole thing with the understanding that once it was done, uh, I would play the, I've got like four or five different videos out of, out of it that I'm throwing away now. You'll never see them. Uh, so I'm, I was going to bring him hundreds and hundreds of customers off these videos. He had every reason in the world to make my experience the best possible experience, and my top the best top. Uh, and instead, I had a miserable experience. I lit, he cut the top off my first day there. He had made the wrong top. I have a Chevy. He had made a Ford top, and you can't make a Ford top fit on a Chevy. So I'm there, ready to put the top on. The, cut, the roof is cut off. There's no top to put on. Okay, he'll make the top. That'll take an extra day or two. Okay, I'm a, I'm a pretty patient guy. I can live with that. Wouldn't have been a problem. The mold, he would ran into the mold with the forklift. So he has to repair the mold. That takes a couple days. Okay, I can wait. So we're looking at two or three days more. I lived in his shop. I used his Wi-Fi. It was cool in his shop. I used uh, his electricity. I, I just slept in the van and used his office. And he had a little kitchen and a microwave. And uh, I didn't have solar anymore because I'm living inside his shop. Uh, but that was OK. I could live with that for two or three days, and I would still give him glowing reviews. Then he had one problem after another. I lived in his shop for six days. Oh, my goodness. I was awful, awful. Uh, I'm a nomad. I live on wheels. I go where I want, when I want, and I'm living in his shop without any transportation for six days. Misery. Okay, I can still deal with that. It was a fluke. He made the wrong top. The, 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 the real mold was damaged. I, I can live with that. It would probably never, ever happen again. That would happen one time to me and never happen again. And everything he did along the way, things broke down. He had the, the spray gun for the fiberglass broke and just on and on. Everything that possibly could go wrong went wrong. And I thought, okay, well, we're getting it all done at once and everybody else will have a great experience. So while I was there, uh, a, a lady came in who knew me from the YouTube video and from the channels. And she was kind of following my footsteps, doing what I told her to do. She came in and got a high top on. I, I made a video of her re reaction. Uh, she was very positive and happy when she left. Um, and I thought, okay, good. This is another recommendation. And I made a video of her saying, yeah, I'm very happy. So I was going to run that for you, too. Uh, and then I so okay, finally it got all done and it was fine and the top was pretty and although it's not shiny, aren't isn't fiberglass supposed to be shiny and pretty? This is not shiny and pretty at all. Uh, and I was really struck with that. But again, I can deal with that. It's not shiny and pretty, but I can deal with that. Um, just one of those things in life. I'm not too looks conscious, obviously. So okay, fine. I'll I'll go along with that. I, I leave, I run some errands, I go home to Florida to take care of my mom. I'd been on vacation in North Carolina, I had a, had a month off. 
And it starts pouring rain in Florida, and the thing leaks like a sieve. And so I write to this other lady, we were going to stay in touch. I was going to do a follow-up video on her high top and her build. She was in the middle of building out her van, so I was going to uh, make a videos out of her build because um, she was in Florida also. And her, her top leaks like a sieve. There was a thread going on my forum, and several people there who had got tops on, theirs were all leaking. So I got to thinking about and looking at how he had done the, the install, and it was very, very poor. It was guaranteed to leak no matter what happened. The one thing you always do when you cut a hole in the roof or you put a, a screws in the roof is you put you use butyl tape. It looks like a kind of you peel it off. It's in a round thing. You peel it off. It looks like tape, except it's um, rubbery. And uh, if you've ever seen it, you know what it is. And if you, if you put a vent in or windows in, I've done it a lot. I've used it a lot. And it's the first thing you always do is you put down butyl tape, then you put the vent or the windows or the top on top of the butyl tape. When you screw it in, that squeezes out the butyl tape and water can't get through it. It forms a watertight seal. He left out butyl tape. He didn't put butyl tape on. He never put butyl tape on. They all leaked. Everyone he's ever going to put on is going to leak. But this gal in Florida, she, it was completely done wrong. It all had to be undone. All the trim piece, there's a, a metal trim piece that's screwed on, and it had to come off. Butyl tape had to go on. He didn't use stainless steel screws, so they replaced the screws with stainless steel screws. Anything else is just going to rust away. Hers were already rusting. After less than a month, all her screws were rusting. Um, so she was going to take all the screws out, throw them away, put in she, uh, stainless steel screws, put the butyl tape on. He didn't caulk the screw heads. Everyone knows. Whenever you make an opening in a roof or on a wall, you caulk the hole, the screws, because water will get in around the screw and follow the screw in, because there's a hole there. Uh, so you always caulk the top of the screws. He didn't do that. So she took, she took it all apart, and she just sent me a photo, and I'm hoping she gives me permission to show you. When he, when he, when he took the, takes the top out of the mold, he trims it, and, and somebody on the forum wrote in and said this. He watched him do it. If you've ever cut a leg, you have four legs, you cut a leg, and this one's cut a little too short, so you cut this one, and then that, whoop, whoop, you cut too much off, and then you have to cut this one, and oh, no, now it's all, these got to be cut. And before you know it, the thing is six inches shorter. That's exactly what he did. You could see that when he put the piece on, the fiberglass root top is like an inch short all the way around. And so when he screwed in the screws, they didn't even hit the fiberglass top. It's unbelievable. It's in incompetence of a level I can't even imagine. That top eventually was going to fly off. It was always going to leak, and eventually it was going to fly off. Uh, so I, if it was just my experience, I would say, now again, I'm the one guy in the world he should do it right for. Because I, in fact, I had told him to come to the RTR, bring tops, and sell them, install them. He was going to sell 30, 40, 50 tops at the RTR alone. And now I'm not going to invite him because I, I can't have that kind of workmanship done in my name. And people come to me and say, Bob, you recommended this guy, and my top leaks, and, event, and five years later it blows off. I can't do that. James is a great guy, the owner of Fiberglass Me. Great guy. I liked him, and the one thing I never want to do is hurt someone. But now the choice is, do I hurt James or do I hurt all of you? Well, you're my family and my tribe, and I cannot hurt you. Um, I, can't do, I can't recommend or, or even brush over uh, the poor quality work he did. So I'm going to say to you, do not go to him. Uh, I, belie I believe he, it's all learning. It turns out uh, the guy who owned the shop had sold it to him. Uh, he was the delivery man. He drove truck for the guy. Uh, and so he bought it, and he started installing them. I don't know if he was just poorly trained or not trained, but it's, he's doing it all wrong. Now, I'm, I'm assuming, having done it all wrong, he'll learn and start doing it right. So if you go there in a year, maybe he'll be doing it perfectly. I don't know, and I, I would hope so. But as of today, uh, August 28th, 2017, my recommendation is that you do not go to him that you find someone with a reputation for superb quality work. Fiberine is one of them. But 
do get a top. If you have to go to Fiberine and drive across the country to go to the very best place in the country and spend $4,000 and know it will never be a problem ever again, go ahead and do that. So I hope you've learned two things from this video. First, that a high top is worth it. The, 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 the a reliable van is number one priority and then adding a top as soon as you can, that's a number two priority. And then number three, go to someone with a very high, very solid reputation to have that high top installed. So until next time, subscribe to the channel, like us on YouTube, and no matter what, never give up on your dreams. You're, a life without dreams, a life of drudgery is not a good life. Grab your dreams. They're not going to just come and throw themselves in your lap. You're going to have to do the work and take the risks and take the leaps of faith and grab your dreams and make them yours. I hope you can do